Speaking of the president, the African transformation movement wants police held accountable for the Pala Pala farm saga. An undisclosed amount of money, allegedly in foreign currency, was stolen from the president's game farm in Limpopo in February 2020. Now, the African transformation movement believes the police are complicit in covering up the theft. The party has made a statement at the office of the Independent Police Investigative Directorate. The NCS Govan Whittles was there when they did that. He joins me now in studio. So, Govan, we know that a fair amount of evidence was handed over uh, by former intelligence boss Andrew Fraser when he uh, broke the story about the president's farm theft. Uh, lots of information was handed over. When the ATM opened this um, complaint at IPED, did they produce any new evidence? They haven't supplemented uh, any of that evidence which is already in the public domain. In fact, you could say that they compiled a dossier based on what was in the public domain and then made a formal complaint to the Independent Police Investigative Directorate. What's interesting here is that when they met with the IPED investigators, the investigators told them that IPED hadn't decided yet whether it would investigate the conduct of the police that responded to the theft um, and that IPED said to them that they were still busy putting all that evidence together themselves. The ATM has now done that for them and accompanied with it is a sworn statement by the president of the ATM in which he details uh, which um, violations have occurred, which crimes they allege the police committed. Um, and among them is, of course, the failure to report uh, the crime, as is alleged uh, by the ATM. Um, and it's important to state here that there's no real evidence that the police commissioner was involved in any sort of cover-up uh, that the ATM has produced to IPED. Instead, what they've asked IPED to do was speedily follow up on the claims that are in the media um, let's listen to the ATM president where he outlines exactly which crimes he believes were committed by the police and on which grounds he believes IPED should investigate. Um, we note that um, the crime, like we've already stated, there's a confirmation that a crime indeed was committed and however it was not reported and the subsequent actions that were done by the police in terms of meeting in no man's land apprehending the suspects, it was not done within the ambit of the law because the crimes were not committed. Um, the other one was the unfall, un unlawful interrogation of suspects. And the other one that is very critical, which is the kidnapping, because kidnapping speaks to the fundamentals of our country. Um, where it speaks about um, the Bill of Rights, because if a person has been deprived his right to movement, it speaks to um, the crux of the problem that we face whereby the suspects or alleged suspects have been unlawfully kidnapped so that whatever investigation that the, 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 the police were going to do, they could do it. So those are amongst the, 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 the crimes which IP has said it falls within their mandate. Govan, does this smack of a sort of political move? We've seen the DA often open cases when they feel that there's a political figure that needs to be held accountable. Uh, and, and often it's, it's drawing attention to, to an important issue. Uh, so that's the, the one question. But also, what exactly are IPAD saying about this? When we look at what the ATM has done today, we really have to look back at how the ATM started, its place in South African politics, and what role they're currently playing. We just work backwards after or before this uh, IPED complaint, the ATM tried and failed to launch a, a motion of no confidence um, in the president. And if you look further back, the suspended secretary general of the ANC, Ace Mahashule, is accused of having a hand in the formation of the ATM. And if you look even further back, when J Jimmy Mani, Mzwanele Mani, joined the ATM, immediately after that, uh, Mzwanele Mani was appointed the spokesperson of former President Jacob Zuma. And that's where we started to see a sort of coalescing of what they call the radical economic transformation group um, of the ANC, starting to get support outside of the ANC. The ATM is not the only part which is associated with this group. You have the BLF as well, which is said to be in the corner and then some elements um, of the ANC. So their position in South Africa is something that they've made clear. 
they've made it clear that they are here to oppose the current administration. Uh, they believe that the former president, Jacob Zuma, was a much better president than our current incumbent. Um, and this is one way that they say they'll hold President Cyril Ramaphosa to account and his cabinet. They're also going for the people that have been appointed by the president. They're alleging the new police commissioner was part of the cover-up. But as I said, there's no real evidence that they've submitted. They've submitted Arthur Fraser's affidavit, as well as a statement by the inspector general of the police in Namibia, um, as well as media reports they've admitted from uh, News 24 and Sunday Independent. That's the dossier in its own. But IPED saying that there is a minimum threshold which needs to be met before IPED can conduct such an investigation. And even though the ATM president met with investigators, those investigators will now have to apply to the executive director of IPED uh, to launch a probe uh, along the same lines that the ATM wants. And even then, IPID may agree to launch the probe, but only into certain sections that they believe warrant investigation according to their own act. Let's listen to the IPID spokesperson now and what she had to say about today's meeting. Yes, IPID and the ATM party's meeting is underway as we speak, and the outcome from today's meeting will assist IPID then to can make a determination on whether should we fully investigate this matter or not, as per section 28.1H of the IPID Act. And this part of the Act states that we can uh, investigate cases that have been referred to us, especially by the Minister of Police, the MEC or the Secretariat, the Secretary sorry, of the Police, or as per decision by the Executive Director of IPED. Right, so it's a bit of a process still with IPED after uh, these, this complaint was laid by ATM today. Thank you very much for that update.